Hi, this is Professor Dan Kernler with another video for my Math 120 series. We're going to do two sections again in this one. This is, um, we're going to talk about section 1.5, sources of errors, and we're also going to do section 1.6, which is about designing experiments. So let's talk about sources of errors here. And this is, sorry for the kind of lack of animation or interesting thing here. There's a lot of talking. And you might do need to do some reading in the online lesson. I'll put that link above. Um, that can be really important to take a look and just kind of read through some of these. So sampling error. What is a sampling error? Here's the thing. When you're selecting a sample from a population, by default, by definition, I should say, because you're doing a sample, you don't have everyone. So any calculations you make, because you don't have everyone, you just have a sample, you're going to be wrong. You don't know how wrong you're going to be. Later on in the course, we'll talk about getting some concept of a measurement of exactly how wrong are you and we'll, we'll be able to narrow it down a little bit but you're never going to know exactly so that's a sampling error just the nature of having a sample you're going to have some error then there are the other ones that you can control a little bit so the frame is the list of individuals so if you're do, if you're doing an observational study and you're trying to select a sample from you know ECC students if your list of individuals is wrong or phone numbers are wrong or something like that and you don't have a full list that's going to be some error. Uh, Non-response, very common in surveys. We did a survey of the faculty. Uh, we have a faculty union here, and we did a survey of the faculty, and we got a 26% response rate. So what happened to the other 74%? What does that mean? How does that affect our results? Those are really important questions. If you're doing interviewing, um, depending on the topic, is it a very sensitive topic, and did the interviewer make it difficult and ask the question in sensitive manner or something like that. Uh, the misrepresented errors or data checks, those are talking about you know how things are entered, are they entered in inappropriately, or did something get misinterpreted before it was entered. Um, types of questions and wording and ordering, those are pretty subtle. Um, there's some reading in the online lesson that I'd recommend to do here. It's really too much for us to talk about, but sometimes uh, the way you word a question can be very biased and create can create a response that actually isn't representing what you might claim it to represent. Um, and so you're really going to need to do some more reading on those, um, and I'm just going to leave it at here. There's not a lot for us to talk about in the video. You need to, to read through the online lesson. So. The next one here, this one is, is a little more interesting. A lot more reading again, but we're going to talk about designs of experiments. You recall back in section, um, I think it was 1.2, I'll put that link up above, um, we talked about observational studies versus designed experiments. And if we design an experiment, then we can claim that one thing caused another. So we're going to talk about what are the characteristics of a designed experiment, talk about the steps, and some different types. So experimental design, some of the key vocabulary here, what we call the, the individuals that are being experimented on are called the experimental units. The thing that we do um, is called the treatment. And then the, what, what we're getting out of this, the thing we're interested in, is called the response variable. Now the response variable often has a lot of different things that affect it. We hope or think the treatment affects it, but it might have a lot of other things as well. And so those are called factors. So experimental units are the individuals. The treatment is the thing we're applying. Response variable is what we're measuring outside of that uh, as, a, as a response to our treatment. And factors are all the different, all the other different things that might affect our response variable. So let's look at an example. Suppose we want to determine if taking a practice exam actually improves student test scores. So in this case, our experimental units would be students because we think that of those students, if they take the practice exam, it will improve their test score. So the treatment that we're applying here would be the practice exam. The response variable in this case would be those test scores. And then the factors, well, of course, practice exam should be a factor. We think it will affect whether or not they, they will, um, or we think it will affect their test score. But then how much time did they spend studying, the quality of the instructor, do they remember something from previous courses? All of those other things are factors as well because they could affect the students' exam scores. So it's a very simple example um, with some of uh, the vocabulary in play there. So let's look at three different experimental designs that all might 
look at how to test this. So a completely randomized is what we call when we take a group, say I have 60 volunteers, and I randomly split them up, 30 students in one group, 30 students in another group. Uh, the first group doesn't take the practice exam, the second group does, and then we compare their exam results. Now, some students, when they're looking at this, say, well, you can't have valid results because you might have smarter students in one group or the other. That's why we randomize. If you randomly assign students to the two different groups, the, the assumption you have is that there are smarter group, there, there, are, there are students who have had statistics before in both classes, there, is, there are brand new students in both classes, there are students um, who study hard in, in both classes, there are students who don't study hard in both classes, and so they're randomly split between the two. That's the assumption you're making. Um, one way you could correct for this is to say, well, you know what, let's, because even 30, even within a random sample, they might not be evenly distributed. So one thing you could do is you could do a, a pre-test and a post-test. So this, this is called, this is an example of a matched pairs. So you have all the students take a pre-test. Then you split them up. And in the end here, when I say compare exam results, you actually are going to look and compare the pre and post. And you're going to look at, well, which students grew the most? Was it the ones who had the practice exams or the ones who didn't have the practice exams? So you've got a matched pair where you're pairing a before and after. A randomized block is basically very similar. My, my understanding of this, what's helped me, is to think of this like the stratified sampling. Say you might think, you know what, um, I feel like practice exam is going to be more beneficial for new students than it would be for, say, second year students. So what I might do is I might split up and say, I'm going to have brand new students who are in their first year and split them up and have two groups and all that. And then I'm going to have students who are in their second year beyond and split them up and do all that and then kind of compare the results after the fact. So that's a randomized block where you have some characteristic you're, you think might affect the results and you split the individuals up based on that characteristic. Uh, so that's, that's an example of a randomized block. So the design experiments here, key vocabulary, the terms you need to know, experimental units, treatment, response variable, and factors. And then we had these three types of designed experiments, completely randomized, match pairs, and randomized block. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Check out the previous video or the next one linked above. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. You can note the time. Uh, 2 colon 52 would be 2 minutes and 52 seconds if you have a comment about a particular time in there. And I will uh, respond as best as I am able. Thanks for watching.